We have a special guest speaker, Tony Ranella, and he is with Ethos Realty. It's Ethos Realty, right. And also has great um, business experience. He started his own business with his wife, and so that's going to be very interesting. And we thank you for coming. Today. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank thank you for you. having me. Um, I just want to start off by saying that I'm really passionate about real estate. And uh, how I got involved, and how my passion came out of, was my, actually my father. Um, as a kid growing up, my dad, uh, he, would, he would instill in us the value of owning your own home. And he really believed that everybody should have a, ho a roof over their head, uh, be it every man, woman, and child. And it came out of uh, going back to when he was a child. At nine years of age, he was yanked from school and uh, was sent up into the mountains of Sicily to be a sheep herder. And he basically slept under the stars, didn't have a roof over his head. His mom and dad, my grandparents, didn't have a home. They rented, they were peasant farmers. And um, he really wanted, his dream was, I guess, being in the mountains one day to wake up and, and have a house. And he didn't see an opportunity, in, well, being in the S-hole countries, as Mr. Trump calls it, uh, he was out of <laughs> Sicily, and he didn't have an opportunity to, to go ahead with himself. And he decided he was going to move to Canada. And with the grace of my aunt, uh, who was living here at the time, they emigrated to Canada, moved to Winnipeg. Why Winnipeg? I don't know, but obviously because of my uh, connection with my aunt. So we ended up. He ended up here, and uh, in 1956, and his dream was to own a house. And within four short years, he actually had enough money put together that he bought a house on Sherburne in the West End. And that's where I was born and raised, in the West End. And probably about nine years later, he had done well and had saved enough money, he bought a house in Westwood, of which they still own today. And he paid thirteen I know he paid ninety six hundred dollars for this house in Sherburne in the West End, sold it for thirteen thousand. So it'd gone up a little bit. Bought a house in the West in Westwood for seventeen thousand and of course they've been there today. That house today is worth over $300,000. That was in 1969 when he bought that house. During that time period, he lost his job. We had to move to Brandon, Manitoba. Lived there for about two years. Again, he didn't believe in renting, so he bought a house, rented the house in Winnipeg, so he wanted to keep that one. Rented the, bought the house in Brandon, uh, paid about, I think, seventeen dollars or $18,000 for that one. And we were there for two years, he was homesick, got to go back to Winnipeg, missed our family. So we moved back to Winnipeg and he sold it. And I, and I told him at the time, don't sell it. And I was only 14. I didn't know. I was, what, what did I know about real estate? But I was enthralled by our realtor that he hired, Mr. Trotche. I won't forget his name. Mr. Trotche um, sold, told him, see, keep the house, rent it out, and down, you know, I'll, I'll take care of it for you. And down the road, the house will increase in value. You'll make money on it. No, no, didn't want it. He didn't want the headache. Moved to Winnipeg. That house sold two years later for $36,000. Now, it, it was something that I kind of went, hey, you know, there, there's something here. It was a moment in time. And I guess I, that's what I want to talk about. It's, there's moments in time of my life that have uh, touched me and re I've realized certain things, how life can affect you. And that was one of them. And it's, at a young age, I decided I wanted to know, learn more about real estate. So I went into university. Um, I wanted to become a city planner. I took my urban studies degree. I was working for CMHC as an appraisal, under the appraisal department at the time. I talked to my department head, and he said to me, I, I said I wanted to become work for CMHC as an appraiser. And he said to me, you know what, he said, why don't you go get your university degree, um, learn how to, then go become a real estate agent, learn how to appraise homes, and then come back to us. Well, I decided to go into real estate, and I never been back to CMHC. That was in 1981. Um, uh, bear in mind, in 1981, I don't know if you, you guys remember what interest rates were like then? Yes. 22%. Yeah, 22%. 22%. Yeah. I sold, oh, pardon me, I made $6,000 in my first year. I had <laughs> holes in my shoes. Yeah. I used to wear, you know those rubber galoshes? Yeah. They, I used to wear rubber galoshes to work because I was too embarrassed to take them off. And people would say, aren't you going to take your galoshes off? And I went, no, no, I'm, I'm leaving. I, I got an appointment. And I didn't. But I was too embarrassed to even take those rubber galoshes off. It was such a difficult time to try and sell a home. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was hard. When you're looking at 22% mortgage rates, a lot of people were going bankrupt. Um, there was a lot of shady characters going in and taking advantage of people who were in a bankrupt situation and buying homes 
and flipping them. Um, as a result, I started noticing this, and it, it was difficult for me. I couldn't make a living at it, and I decided to, well, I didn't decide. I had my broker brought in um, a motivational speaker. Her name was Judy. She was from Del Carnegie, and I decided to take the Del Carnegie course just to help me lift my spirits. In taking the course within six months, um, I couldn't afford very much. I was in debt up to my eyeballs. Within six months, I quit my job as a realtor. I got married. I bought a house. And within two years, I had sold that house and bought the house that I'm in right now. The, just my motivational, as I changed, shifted my, my mindset and went into a totally different field. The field that I went into was, real, uh, was tour, the tour business. So I owned a, a company called Sun Ice Tours, and we did we did trips to Minneapolis for, and we still do, for uh, concerts, uh, football games, hockey games, uh, and a thing called Apple River Tubing. I don't know if anybody ever heard of that. I have to say that's my claim to fame. Um, I was sitting in a dentist chair in the Simboy in dentist street, and I picked up this magazine, I looked on it, and I went, Tubing, Apple River. I wonder if I could do that in the summer. And then I was doing ski trips in the winter. So hence the name Sun in the summer, yep. ice, sun ice. Sun trip. ice, that's got a nice. Yeah. So that's how it got started. And I did extremely well. Uh, it did, it, within two years, things were rosy, everything was fantastic. Until, your, until the year 2000 hit. Um, I also, so let me back up a little bit, uh, I also acquired some government contracts. One of my biggest contracts was the German Army in Shiloh, Manitoba. They were going there, every 660 guys were coming in every three weeks. We would pick them up and take them to either Minneapolis, Winnipeg, you may have seen them running around the streets here back then, uh, and also in Kenora. And it, that contract lasted for about 17, 18 years for me. In the year 2000, they decided to pull out and move from Shiloh back to Germany. The wall came down, things were changing. All of a sudden, I was faced with a dilemma because 9-11 happened after that, scared people from traveling. Uh, the exchange rate went to 60%. All along, interest rates in homes, where we're at, at 22%, had slowly been dropping. From 1983, when I got into the business, those interest rates went from 22% all the way down to the year 2000. They were down around 5 or 6%. So I decided I need to do a life change. I have, again, another life shift. So I went to a headhunter and I asked him, you know, can you do a, an assessment on me as to my profile? What do you feel is good for me? He came back and told me, he says, you ever thought of becoming a real estate agent? <laughs> so I kind of smiled and I went, hmm, I guess I got to go back to my roots. So I went back to becoming a realtor. And so in 2002, I waited for about two years. In 2002, I finally went and got my license again and started up all over again in real estate. Now, bearing in mind, I, I want to do, um, uh, it, before I get into my career in real estate, before then, I want to back up to when I went to university. When I went to university, I became very, uh, wanted to become an, a city planner. I had a paper that I made uh, on housing prices in Winnipeg from the 1900s all the way to the year 19, 1982 when I entered the market. That housing paper basically reflected what prices do in Winnipeg. And I stretched it out over 100 years, and they basically went on a gradual incline all the way up. There was little things along the way that caused a little blip. 1929, the stock market crash. Um, 1944, the end of the war. Uh, in the 50s and 60s, we had a huge immigration population. My dad was part of it, came into Canada. And in 1973, which for me was a defining moment, 1973, does anybody remember does, what happened in 1973? Oil. Oil, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> baby boom. Yeah, I was just raising that. The baby boom entered the market in 1973 and masses started buying up homes. Do you remember I told you my dad bought a house for 17000 yeah. sold for 36 yeah. what it sold for two, 36 two years later? 1973. So basically housing prices yeah. jumped like that. Now, what I've noticed with the paper that I did is every 15 to 20 years, there is a shift in the market. And if you look back in 1929 to 1944, it was like 16 years, something like that. And then back in the, in the 50s, early late, late 50s, early 60s, and then in 1973. So it's like every 15 years, there's a shift in the market. 73 to 83 was 10 years, but we had that interest rates went to yeah. the roof. Yeah. 
I bought my house in 1985, the one I'm in right now, for $143,000. So I went through this whole process of, of, of doing great in my business, and in the year 2000, I'm faced with a, a life change. What do I do? So I go into real estate. The first thing that I did when I got into real estate, I, did, I assessed my house, I did my paper all over again. And I started looking at it. So from 1983, 84, 85, when I bought it, I paid for 143. In the year 2000, it was worth $159,000. So basically, it increased like $1,000 a year. I call it flatlining. Yeah. So every 15 years, you see a flatline. The year 2002, when I entered the market, the market woke up and went 22% mortgage rates in 83. We're down to 5 or 6%. It's a good time to buy. Well, now, we've been now 16 years in the year 2002. Interest rates have dropped down to two and a quarter percent. Yep. Okay. Where the lowest has ever been in history. Remember, we I said increments yep. of 16 years. It's been 16 years now. I'm wondering where we're going to be in the next 16 years. Are we still in that upswing, or are we going to be flatlining? I personally believe we're in a flatline situation coming in. Uh, I get a lot of people saying to me, "Well, I'm going to wait till the market crashes." But I challenge everybody. Can you tell me when you saw a stock market or a housing market crash in Winnipeg? It has never happened. My paper proves it. Right from the year 1900s when the city became a city, and we've never seen a, a crash. What we see is flat. So from 1983 when I bought my house till the year 2000, I basically was watching paint dry. It was like this. Gradual, maybe a thousand dollar a year increase, but nothing dramatic. So now we've had another dramatic increase. We've, I think we've reached a plateau. I could be wrong, but I mean, this housing market can't continue the way it's been yep. doing for so long. One thing you, you can rest assured of, it doesn't crash, so it'll probably just flatline. So you may enjoy the next 20 years of flatline before the next upswing. Okay? Again, those are just my opinion. But anyway, so there's where my, my passion came from, is my dad planting this seed in, in, as a kid, saying how important it is to have a, home, a roof over your head. And as a result of that, a couple of years ago, I decided to get more into a, more philanthropy in regards to helping people out with their housing needs. And um, I was searching around and I noticed that Manitoba Real Estate Association has a foundation called the, um, well, it's called the Shelter Foundation, of which now I've become, I'm, this year I'm vice chair of the organization, in two years I'll be chair of it. Um, and one of the things I have to say is, when I came here two years ago, we granted large uh, $5,000, I think yes. it was, yeah. and we did it again this year. Um, that whole uh, experience of being able to donate like that, it, it changed my life. Another pivotal moment in my life, and I'm so grateful that I can, I'm able to do that. Last year, we had nine people apply, or nine organizations apply for money. This year, we had 27. I think next year is going to be even even larger. I'm happy to say that we're going to continue with large, because I think you guys do great great things here. Um, and Diana, i got to tell you one more thing. is The last time I was here, I left. We were here, and we had lunch with Jeff and, and I. And we left, and we went to uh, Main Street Project, which is our yes. next yes. recipient. We drove there, and we got there. And you know what? Uh, do everybody know what the Main Street Project is? Yes. Right on Higgins, uh, yes. by Higgins and Mainnet? Yeah. I, I don't know how many times I've driven by that situation, and I drive by and I go, you know what, we should do something, we should do something. And unfortunately, I'm driving, and then by the time I leave that area, out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. Anyways, this was the first time that I actually, we stopped and went inside. The staff there took us for a tour of the facility, mm -hmm. and it opened up my eyes. Another pivotal moment in my life, because they, experience, they made me experience um, what goes on behind closed doors. You see it on the outside, but you don't see what goes behind the work that they do behind closed doors. So they took us in and showed us around. And we went to Martha Street, where they have the facilities. Has anybody been there, by the way? No? Not till uh, 1130. Yeah. You're going? <laughs> Good for you. I think everybody should go there and take a look at it because it, it's, uh, it was an emotional experience for me because they took us in and we went wandering around. Uh, where there's the facilities are where the, the, they house them and they had beds on the floor and everybody was strung out mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm going we're not going to walk and they did they walked us right through them and then down into where they as he, they put it the holding tank yeah. so whenever the, the police find people on the street they bring them to the they call it the drunk tank 
<clears throat> we're the only they're the only facility in, in Canada that still has a, Winnipeg is the only city that has a drunk tank. And anyways, it was very daunting and very draconian. I walked in and I looked at these things. The cell is probably as wide as this table and to the wall there. And they have a grate on the floor and they basically throw the people in there and if they throw up or saw themselves, they just come in and hose them down. It, it's, it was quite an emotional experience and then I looked around and there was a couple of security guards in there and they also have computers attached with health science centers so they have, at any given time they can call a doctor and get them to come in and help them out even by, by computer or by phone or whatever. But at least they have somebody there at all times. And, and I looked at these people and I went, I can't believe the work that you do. I don't know if I could do it, yeah. but I was so touched by it. So I really believe in what we're doing on, at Mental Real Estate Association in regards to the Shelter Foundation, and we're going to continue doing it. Um, the Shelter Foundation raises funds through socials, golf tournaments, um, and we're also going to campaign now called Close the Door, Open, um, Close the Door, no, make a sale, close the door. So anyways, when every time you make a sale, you uh, donate $10 to open a door for somebody else. So it's paying it forward. And I really believe in this. And what we're doing right now, and I'm going to be spearheading it next year, is pushing the realtors to $10. That's all it is, is a $10 donation from every sale. And last year, we gave away $47,000. That's a lot of sales. And it's a lot of people donating. So I really believe in that, and uh, I, I want to continue doing it. Anyways, just pivotal moments in my life that I wanted to share with you, how I got into real estate, why I got into real estate, and why I'm going to continue doing it. And uh, that's my life. Thank you. Thank you very much.